you guys. Thanks for tuning in Deuces Wild channel. I'm going to show you how to install an afterburner kit in your RC jet. I'm literally hanging my phone from the ceiling so uh, on a string, so hopefully it stays put. <clears throat> but uh, so you're going to need one of these go get them wires. Highly recommend. You're going to need a zip tie and some foam tack. Here's my foam tack. Let me grab the zip, zip tie. Ugh. As you can see, I've already taken the motor cover hatch off. And I've got my light bulb. And I've got, this is the older controller that I had in the first F-16 video. It just comes on solid. Um, it doesn't get brighter after 50%. But I'm going to go ahead and use it in my old Bayhawk anyway, because these bulbs are still bright enough, and I'm good with that. So, first thing you're going to want to do after you get it ready is to get your go get them wire routed. And I've got the hatch off, so I'm going to... Get underneath here and run this thing through till I can see it. Oops, took a wrong turn. There we go. All right. Sometimes it pays to have a, some of these little guys here just so you can pull it up through there. So I'm going to put the motor off to the side and I'm going to reach in there and get the end of my go get them wire. And get it where I can access it. And here's the light bulb. And I might actually take my, before I route that, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully carve this little opening out just a little bit more. This is soft plastic. Be careful not to hurt the wires. But the reason I'm doing this is so that I can have a little more room for my motor wire, a little more clearance for the motor wires. So I'm just gonna open this up a little bit. And that's just a personal preference for me because I like to let things breathe a little bit. And uh, Makes it easier to slip over the motor too when the wires aren't binding up. So, oops, I'm actually pulling this apart, so I better not do that. <clears throat> okay. And get that ready. So, let's go ahead and get this fed through there. Reach in there and get this guy. Sometimes it's a good idea to add a little piece of tape, which I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. So that way it hangs on to the wire. <clears throat> find some tape here and let's get that going. Pardon my mess on my bench, guys. I've always got some kind of project going on where I'm doing something, modding something, fixing something. That's just kind of how it goes in this in this hobby. So I don't normally like to do install videos because most guys if you're flying jets by now you already know how to do this stuff i'm sure but this is for the people that are new into this hobby and probably like to see this kind of stuff so as you can see i've wrapped a little electrical tape around there and now we're going to find the other end of the go get them wire and feed it through so we can get that ready to receive the uh Sometimes you gotta jiggle things around. There we go. So it'll be ready to receive. And I'm gonna leave that attached. Okay, so that way the wire doesn't fall back through and I have to repeat the process. So now the next step, as you can see, I've got my wires kind of tidied. I'm just gonna dry fit to make sure everything fits in there. I'm gonna run these wires through and in and make sure that I can slip this on there. And I can. Okay, so 
Looks like I might want to carve out just a little bit more on my... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Oh, i got a better idea. I'm going to take this zip tie off because it's actually hindering me. I do this carefully so you don't hurt any of the wires. So I'm going to take that off. I'm going to choke these up a little bit higher right here. Okay, because I want this to dry fit really nice. And I want everything just to kind of slide into place. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. And so the motor sets like this. So yeah, we'll go with that. And I might just bend these back just a little bit on the motor can to give myself a little breathing room. So that looks good. So now that we got that ready and we know it's going to go on there, I'm go ahead and set this aside for now. Now I'm going to break out the foam tack. Now some of these have a little lip on the inside edge right there. And I, I've already taken my uh, hobby knife and just kind of trimmed that little lip off of there so I get a flat contact with the motor can when I go to glue it. So. That way you have a little more mechanical purchase going on with your glue, a little more surface contact. And uh, let's, let's goop it up in there and get some, get, make sure we're, we got plenty of glue on there. I don't want to short myself of any glue. Okay. We'll go back to what we were doing here a second ago these wires all in there. Slide this into place. I kind of I kind of do this sort of quickly because <clears throat> I want to be able to put the motor in there and then I want to be able to adjust the uh, centering of this light <clears throat> as quickly as possible before the glue sets. Let's go ahead and Get our zip tie in place. And you don't have to go crazy with the zip tie. You just want to get it snug. So it creates a little bit of a... A little bit of a t tension on the cone itself. I'm just going to snug it up a little bit. And clip off the excess. I'm going to pull this wire through a little bit tighter so it's out of the way. And then while I've got it hanging, I'm going to add another zip tie higher up on these wires just to kind of tidy everything up. Oops. If I can hang on to my zip tie, that'd be great. I don't know if you can see this on the camera. Hopefully you can. Like I said, I've literally, I can't. I was going to try to hang my tripod from the rafters here, but I decided to uh, just take some paracord and tie it to a nail and hang my phone that way. I know it's kind of makeshift, but gets the job done. Actually, now we're ready to put it in. I do one more little step with my glue, and I explained this in my video, but I didn't, in my last video, but I didn't show it. So I'm going to add a bead of glue right here or foam tack i'm just going to go right around the face of this uh adapter cone for the afterburner bulb to give it a little extra and now you can see i can still move stuff around a little bit so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and feed this in there Get those wires tucked down in that little channel down there and squeeze that on in. Okay, that looks pretty good. Go down in there, kind of nudge those wires down in that groove a little bit so everything's sitting nice and flat. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to go in the tailpipe. I know you can't see that on camera, but I'm going to take my long screwdriver and I'm just going to push up on the bulb a little bit just to center it. 
the four of the glue sets so the light bulbs are nice and centered in the in the exhaust tube and uh give it a chance to uh, set up and we're gonna go ahead and put our screws back in so the fans sitting down nice and snug you can take and put a little bit of uh, foam tack on the heads of these screws get this to stay put you can put a little foam tack on the just around the outer head of these screws to the plastic housing on the motor to keep them from backing out but I haven't had a problem with those the screws coming loose I've only had a problem with the actual wood blocks that they screw into on one occasion come loose <clears throat> but for the most part they hold pretty good just gotta snug them down to make sure they don't you know, you're all the way in, that's it. And let's get this last one in. I know this stuff's kind of boring, guys, but there's really not much to it. Afterburners are pretty simple. They're pretty straightforward. Um, let me double check my centering in the back of the exhaust tube. And it doesn't have to be dead perfect. Just get it, you know, eyeball it center. And it, and that's it. You don't really need to you don't really need to get too crazy with it. Now we're going to put the cover back on. And then we're going to hook up the controller. And then we're going to plug a battery into this bad boy and fire it up so you can see it. Now, remember this is one of the, 5280's older controllers, um, so it's only going to flicker and then go solid on. It's not going to, the updated ones are flicker, go solid on at 50%, and then get brighter while solid on to from 50 to full. This one's just going to be flicker, flicker, flicker to half throttle, and then full, solid on, and stay that same brightness from 50 all the way up. So it's just a regular... Uh, the old style, I should say, not the regular, but the original one. They've uh, Larry since updated them, so they're a lot better now than they used to be. But I'm okay with this old one and this jet. This is an old jet, so I'm not too concerned about it. I don't know if you can see in the camera. I've got it positioned there, but all right. So that was it for the install of the bulb. Now I've got my controller. I'm going to go ahead and untape the uh, the lead for the lamp. Oh my god, I stuck it on there so good. Didn't want to come off. There we go. Okay, let's just unravel this carefully. Unhook that. I had a bunch of these laying around, these, uh, I call them, go get them, Sparky. They're little wires that can't, because I have so many free wing jets that there was quite a few that I got when I bought new jets. Okay. So, here's your controller. This is going to connect to your battery lead, balance lead on your battery. This is going to go into a Y harness on your throttle channel, and this goes to the light. So, let's go ahead and hook the light up. Make sure your orientation is correct, red to red, black to black, as you can see there. Uh, nothing too fancy. Now, I'm not going to glue and tape the controller in just yet. Uh, I'm not going to videotape that because obviously everybody's going to position things in their battery compartment differently than other people. So, um, all depending on the jet, but you get the gist of it. You can tape it or you can foam tack that controller where you want. So, we're going to go ahead and Stick a battery in this old girl. <clears throat> this was one of my first big jets I got when I started in the EDF jets a few years back. And I went, I started off with a little free wing 64 millimeter high performance F22. And then uh, this was my first quote unquote big boy jet, if you will. Uh, well, you 
know what? I need the other. I need an adapter, guys. Hold on a second. Bear with me. I need the correct adapter. Let's see if I can find the correct adapter. Okay. Because this jet came with a XT60. And let me get my radio set up to the Bayhawk. I've had this jet for three plus years, maybe going on four years. Uh, let's see, I forget. I have so many planes. Let me see if I can find it. Just bear with me. I'm going to find the Bayhawk. Where's the Bayhawk? Hawk T1, there it is. Prop secured, flaps up, gear down, off, high rates, gear up, motor on, prop secured, gyro initialized. Okay, this has an old lemon diversity. These are the pre-2020 ones when they were good. From 2020 up, they were, they're not so good. All right, so next, I'm going to install a Y harness on my throttle channel. So on this particular, on these, if I remember correctly. Yep, that's it right there. Make sure my orientation is correct. You know, I don't like the way that fits in this white harness, guys. Let me, let me grab a different one. Let me grab a different Y harness because I know I've got some floating around somewhere. Uh, if I could just remember where the hell I put them. Let's see. We've got a lot of stuff down here in the, the old Deuces dungeon. I'm trying to remember where the heck I put these. Y harnesses. Where, oh, where did, oh, here they are, guys. I found them. I forgot I had them over here in this other spot, so I don't like the way that one feels. Uh, so, that was a three. You know what? I got three way harnesses. I know I got some more Y harnesses somewhere. Dang it. I just got, oh, you know what? I forgot. I've got a heavy duty one. Let's use the heavy duty one. These are the ones that, when you buy those heavy duty extensions, you can get these guys. And everything fits nice and tight. Oh yeah, that's the way it should fit. Okay, nice and tight. Check our orientation, everything looks good. Oh yeah, nice and tight. Okay guys, time to, time to test it out. I'll be taking my camera down off the string here in a second and putting it behind the jet. So another little side note, guys. Always power up your plane and let it initialize before plugging your afterburner controller in because sometimes if you have a separate gyro, it can throw the gyro out of whack. And then you have to go back and uh, reset everything. So. Remember, power the plane up, let it initialize, then plug your controller into your battery lead um, in that order. Now, when you go to power down, you can unplug your battery first if you want. I generally like to unplug the afterburner first and then power off the plane and then power up the plane and then plug the afterburner in just so I don't have any problems with the gyro. So, uh, all right. Next, I'm just gonna throw the hatch on. Right now I've got everything in here loosely. It's not a finished done deal yet because I'm not gonna bore you with all the details of tidying up wires and taping stuff down and all that stuff. I'm, I'm sure you guys already know how to do all that stuff. Otherwise you probably wouldn't be watching this video and going, Mike, you didn't have to show me all that. I, I already know that. Anyway, okay, let me hook up my transmitter. Let me untie my phone from a, a little makeshift setup over here. 
I know, I had it on string, see that? <laughs> That's how I was holding it. I know, crazy. Anywho, <clears throat> one more thing. Oh, one more thing. No, you know what? I'll just hold it. I'll just hold it. I was going to flip my stand upside down, but we'll just go ahead and hang on to the Loka plane. On. There you have it. I didn't want to go over half throttle because I'd have to flip my stand over, strap it down. But I've got a bunch of crap I gotta move there. I just wanted to show you guys. That's plenty bright. It doesn't have to get any brighter than that. This plane, because it has nav lights on it, out of the box, and a landing light, I could technically fly this thing at night. And with the afterburner on it, that's just gonna make it that much sweeter, especially when it goes away planes with just nav lights and forward landing lights tend to disappear when they're flying away from you in this attitude but see that thing going away i'll even see it side two and, and coming at me just because the light is so bright it actually bleeds through the red painted you're going to see that glow at night trust me or after the sun goes down guaranteed anyway Thanks for tuning in to Deuce's Wild Channel. Hope you enjoyed it. Peace.